Security Command and Counter and uh, secured and bypass us to support Colonel Nasan in the attack inside Palace. informed that there are so many participants but uh, up to this time I don't know who are they but I, I was informed that we have forces from the army the air force from the PC and the Philippine Navy and uh, this are the troops that will be neutralizing all those forces that will be coming towards Malacanang. I am not a member of the reform movement of the armed forces, but uh, I am very close to Colonel Malacan during my days when I was still active in skydiving in 1977, and I consider him as one of the best officer and a brother. So with the, his proposition, I easily accede to him. Late word has it that the president has offered not to punish former chiefs Enrile and Ramos if they surrender. The offer was reportedly rejected by Enrile and Ramos. The clemency offer was reportedly conveyed to the breakaway leaders by Energy Minister Geronimo Velasco late this afternoon as the Marine contingent set up positions on the south side of the AFP and PC headquarters. We were on board one of the helicopters. GMA News camera and Boysons and I were on board a helicopter used by the Marine contingent dispatched to set up a forward position near Camps Crown and Chinaldo, and here is how we saw it. The battalion sized contingent of Marines in full battle gear, supported by about a dozen tanks and armored vehicles, rolled down the Villamore Air Base at around 2 p.m. We followed the column from a Philippine Air Force UE helicopter piloted by Captain Ricardo Ronquillo. led by its commandant, Brigadier General Artemio Fajal Jr., had to stop at the Edza Ortigas intersection, where it was blocked by a column of abandoned buses, private vehicles, and thousands of civilians. The blockade prompted the authorities to stop the armored column and the troops from marching near Camp Kramer in an effort to avoid bloodshed. Meanwhile, a hoax bomb threat delayed for more than two hours at Thai International flight to Tokyo this afternoon. Obstacle men using specially trained dogs searched the plane but found no bomb on board. The airliner, which had 127 passengers and a crew of 16, was allowed to depart. Both the domestic and international airports remained open to all flights today with no noticeable increase in air traffic. MIA General Manager Luis Tabuena said that except for tightening of security, the two airports are operating normally. With a buffer zone composed of civilians separating the two forces, a direct confrontation has been averted. Jessica Soho with the details. Tens of thousands continue to hold vigil along EDSA, keeping watch over camps Aguinaldo and Crame, where reformists Juan Ponce and Rile and General Fidel Ramos are holed up. Several hundreds more could be seen guarding the side entrances of both camps. Sympathizers had formed two large groups, one along the EDSA Ortigas intersection and another fronting gate 2 of Camp Aguinaldo. Generally, the atmosphere is festive with the occasional honking of cars and the usual chantings and sloganeerings. At around 2 o'clock this afternoon, however, two Sikorsky helicopters could be seen hovering above the crowds, causing the people below to tense for some time. As of 5 o'clock this afternoon, hundreds of sympathizers could be seen leaving, although several contingents more from as far back as Maritina had also started to arrive. Jessica Soho with cameraman Rick Villegas for GMA News.
Throughout the day, the breakaway group issued claims through radio the majority of the commanders of the military and police units have expressed support for Enrique and Ramos, a claim denied by the AFP through General Bell. In San Fernando, La Union, two or three provincial commanders in the Lobos region, who Lieutenant General Ramos reportedly said were throwing uh, their support behind him and Mr. Enrique, denied the claim. Pangasinan PC Chief Colonel Benancio Duque Jr. and La Union Provincial Commander Colonel Isaias Begonia made the statement in the presence of Tourism Minister Jose Aspiras. The two say they support the President and are mandated by the Constitution to protect his person and his office. Duque and Begonia also said that they are sure RUC-1 Commander Brigadier General Tomas Dumpit is loyal to President Marcos. In Cebu City, Center of Desires Regional Unified Commander Brigadier General Renato Ekarma the bank reports of the split in the region's military forces. Ekarma said they have remained united and will continue to take orders from President Marcos and General Bell. The atmosphere along the Edsa stretch between Boni, Serrano and Ortigas Avenue remains relaxed, even festive, as reports from the field indicate. A makeshift stage has been set up along the stretch where some entertainers are said to be performing for the civilians who have volunteered to act as human buffer zone. At the height of the tense moments this afternoon, we had a crew who took pictures of what was going on inside Camp Aguinaldo and Crane. Now on back to the Mr. Enrile received a media man in his office shortly before noon and denied knowing anything about the alleged coup attempt. He also said he did not know the military officers who confessed participation in the alleged coup plot. I said uh, I'm not aware of any such plot, and I was surprised about it. I did not know the man who was talking about it. I've never heard him before. Uh, I've never met him before. Shortly after noon, General Fidel Ramos also received the media in his office at Camp Crane and claimed very broad support among the military. Ramos said that the reformists had the support of a number of commanders in every region. Ramos also claimed support for members of the INP except those who guard Malacanan. About 2 p.m., and really walked out of the defense ministry building at Aguinaldo to all the crowd on Edsa and met General Ramos at the gate of Camp Crane. Together, they proceeded into the PCINP headquarters where they remained until dark. And really claimed that Aguinaldo was too large for them to hold and that they had decided to consolidate their forces in Crane. During the afternoon, various leaders showed up at the Crane headquarters, including Dito Gingona, ex-Chief of Staff Romero Espino, Jose Concepcion Jr., and late in the afternoon, Doi Laurel. Doi Laurel said Cory Aquino would probably meet soon with Enrique and Ramos. Around 5 p.m., Enrique Ramos and Doi Laurel held a news conference. In that conference, Enrique and Ramos reiterated their earlier statements that they no longer recognize President Marcos as their commander-in-chief. Here's a report just in. Central Bank Governor Jose Fernandez Jr. announced tonight that the Monetary Board has decided to declare tomorrow, February 24, a bank holiday for all banks in the country. We would like to repeat that. The Central Bank Governor announced tonight that the Monetary Board has decided to declare tomorrow a bank holiday for all banks throughout the country. We will be back. Early this morning, last night, a lot of people went to 24-hour stores immediately after news of the breakaway incident was broadcast. This morning, various supermarkets around the metropolis were packed with shoppers. People were buying such items as canned goods, milk, sugar, toilet paper, cold cuts, and eggs. Gasoline stations early in the morning were also jammed with motorists. There were long lines at gas stations, prompting several gas station owners to regulate the purchase of gasoline. Some gas station owners lost their temper. Panic buying at the gas stations later east. Classes in Metro Manila are not officially suspended tomorrow. But the education minister said schools could call off classes at their own discretion. Minister Jaime Laya, however, said at least 10 schools adjacent to Kant, Krame, and Aguinaldo in Quezon City won't have classes tomorrow. Two of these schools are right inside Camp Aguinaldo. 
to others inside Camp Camer or in Murphy District and the Ponciano Bernardo Elementary School and High School in Pedro Suazo Street. Two of our embassies abroad have reportedly disengaged themselves from President-elect Marcos. A United Press International report said the Philippine consulate in Honolulu, Hawaii, and in Los Angeles, California, expressed their support to former Defense Chief Enrile and General Ramos. The Hawaii statement was signed by consular employees and or employees and was read by Raul Rabe, the Consul General. The statement in Los Angeles was made in the absence of Consul General Armando Fernandez. Fernandez is here in the country and was scheduled to return early next month. The Los Angeles statement was signed by Acting Principal Consular Officer Leo Vigildo Anulin and nine other consulate officials. Over at the White House, the Reagan administration issued its own statement on the latest developments here. And ABC News' Sheila Katz had that story. Secretary of State Schultz left the White House after a 15-minute conference phone call with President Reagan at Camp David. Schultz and National Security Advisor Poindexter at the White House and Defense Secretary Weinberger and Chief of Staff Reagan. After discussing the day's developments in the Philippines, the President approved a statement that went far beyond his earlier criticisms. It noted that in relays in Ramos's calls for Marcos to step down reinforce our concerns that the recent presidential elections were marred by fraud, perpetrated overwhelmingly by the ruling party. The statement said that fraud was so extreme as to undermine the legitimacy of the election and impair the capacity of the Marcos government to cope with a growing insurgency and a troubled economy. <laughs> Unlike the Aquino supporters demonstrating in front of the White House, the statement Mr. Reagan approved did not call for Marcos to resign. Congressional leaders were more blunt. He has lost the church, he's lost the middle class. Uh, clearly, uh, he is now in the process, it seems to be, of losing the military support. Democrats said President Reagan had not gone far enough. Mr. Reagan still has not provided strong, clear American leadership. The chairman of the House Foreign Relations Pacific Subcommittee said Mr. Reagan should telephone Marcos and tell him to leave. If he is willing to relinquish power now in order to make possible a peaceful transition to a new government in the Philippines, that we would be willing under those circumstances to permit him to come here. Over at the Vatican, Pope John Paul II addressed some 1,000 Filipino demonstrators who gathered in St. Peter's Square. The Pope urged a non-violent solution to the latest crisis. The Cab Paul is quiet along the Edna stretch between Boni, Serrano and Ortigas Avenue. An offer of clemency has been offered to Enrique Ramos if they surrender, but the offer has been rejected by the breakaway group's leaders. Loyalist uh, troops composed of the Marine Battalion, backed by armor, have set up positions on the south side of the perimeter fences of Santa Aguinaldo and Crane. They are within artillery range. The breakaway group, on the other hand, has set up advanced defensive positions around the ASP and PC headquarters. The reformist group have issued claims that military commanders nationwide have thrown their support behind Enrile and Ramos, a claim that the AFP says is nothing but propaganda. In a nutshell, a standoff continues with a buffer zone composed of civilians keeping the two forces apart and effectively preventing an armed confrontation. The Central Bank announced tonight that the Monetary Board has decided to declare tomorrow, February 24, a bank holiday for all banks nationwide. That winds up our GMA report for December 2019.